Welcome to To Your Health. I'm your host, Rhonda Alfred. Joining us on this episode are Dr. Andrea Lorio and Dr. Hugo Azima. Both are pulmonologists and critical care specialists at Terrebonne General Pulmonary Care. As pulmonologists, they specialize in treating diseases involving the respiratory tract. They are here to share more about what they do in their specialty training. Thanks for taking the time to join us, Doc. Thanks. Thanks for having us. All right. Well, I know y'all have been very busy, and I appreciate you taking the time out of your schedule. And we have somebody new on board, so we'll get to that in a second. But Dr. Lorio, why don't we start with you introducing yourself and telling us a little bit more about your role at Terrebonne General. Sure. My name's Andrea Lorio. I've been at Terrebonne General now for five years. I am a pulmonologist and intensivist or critical care physician. Um, I help to treat all of our pulmonology and critically ill patients in the hospital as well as in the clinic setting. Okay, I know you've been very busy over the last 18 months, correct? Yes, very busy. <laughs> and over the last month during Especially our recovery with process. with the recovery efforts and, yeah. and COVID still in the area. So we'll talk a little bit more about that. Mm -hmm. And Dr. Hugo, welcome to Terrebonne General. Thank you, thank you. We're so glad to have you with us. Tell us a little bit more about yourself and what you'll be doing at Terrebonne General. Well, I'm Ugo Ezema. I'm from Nigeria by way of Jamaica. I'm also a pulmonary critical care uh, physician. Just started here at Terrebonne General. Uh, I've been in this area essentially since 2005 and I've claimed it as my home now. Oh, great, great. So we kind of grew on you a little bit, absolutely, huh? Absolutely, absolutely. Oh, good. All right. Well, Dr. Lorio, let's start with you. Can you tell us what is pulmonology? So if you break the word apart, it basically ology is the study of um, and pulm uh, basically deals with everything to do with the respiratory system. So everything from the airway down into the lungs. And so we focus on the diagnosis and treatment of lung disorders. And Dr. Hugo, can you tell us about some of the common conditions that you treat in your office? Of course, uh, some of the more common conditions that we treat in our clinics, um, COPD, uh, asthma, emphysema, those are some of the very common conditions that, that we see in our clinic. Mm -hmm. And tell me some of the treatments that you do provide for these types of conditions. The treatments that we provide uh, mainly deal with assessing and evaluating for the need for therapies, uh, inhaler therapies for COPD and asthma, assessing for uh, rehabilitation and, and helping our patients with the management and uh, dealing with some of their illnesses. Right. I know some of these are chronic diseases, so mm -hmm. people have to learn, the patients have to learn to live with them, and you all can teach them how to do that, right? Absolutely. Okay. I know that you all are big proponents of lung cancer screenings as well. Yes, we are. Mm -hmm. So that is something that we also offer. Yes, yes. All right. And um, as we mentioned, some of these diseases, are they preventable or I know some can be and maybe some can't? Do you want to tell us a little bit about some that can be prevented that you deal with? Many of the diseases that we deal with are preventable. Um, sometimes they're environmental. Sometimes there are uh, genetic components to some of the diseases that we deal with. More, com more commonly, especially in the setting of COPD and uh, perhaps maybe in asthma, smoking is or exposure to smoke is something that we talk about a lot with a lot of our, pati our patients and cutting that back. Um, and that's one of the easier ways, a uh, simpler way uh, to, to help prevent some of the diseases that we deal with. Dr. Lorio, do you want to say anything about some of the things that you all do in, all, in your office? So in our office, we're able to offer a bunch of different services. Um, obviously, coming and seeing one of our uh, world-class physicians. Um, but also, we offer uh, spirometries, which is a measurement of lung functions that helps us guide our therapy for asthma and COPD patients, as well as assess their response to therapies. Mm -hmm. Um, we also do six-minute walks, which assess patients' need for oxygen um, or other therapies, uh, like Dr. Ugo mentioned, um, starting uh, pulmonary rehab for some of our uh, more chronically ill patients. Um, and we also uh, are able to do some lab collection uh, with 
uh, ABG, which is blood testing to look at concentrations of oxygen. Um, so it tells us a little bit more in depth about lung function. Oxygen is very important. I know you mm -hmm. all do a lot with oxygen. Yeah. Um, and Dr. Loria, when does somebody know that they need to see a pulmonologist? So, you know, the biggest thing is, is working closely with your primary care physician, um, talking about concerns or needs that you have. Um, but if you find that you're short of breath or you have cough that doesn't resolve with usual therapies, um, or you start failing different uh, prescription medications, you know, through your primary care provider, then it's time to start talking with your physician about maybe a referral to come see one of us. Okay, so it's when you can't be managed by your primary care physician that mm -hmm. the you as yep. a specialist get involved. Yeah. All right, all right, well, we're gonna take a break, but we're gonna be right back with more from Dr. Lorio and Dr. Yugo. Thanks for watching To Your Health. We're back with more from Dr. Andrea Lorio and Dr. Yugo Azima. Okay, guys, let's talk a little bit more about what you all do as critical care specialists. Um, can you tell me, Dr. Yugo, what do you do in the hospital and the CCU as a critical care specialist? Absolutely. In critical care, we ideally um, and mostly deal with patients that are in the critical care unit. Those, these are patients that are uh, not that's dissimilar from patients that have moved from their primary care to pulmonologists. These are patients that have moved from the general medicine uh, parts of the hospital and require a higher level of care. Um, and those are the patients that we tend to take care of. They tend to be patients that are having true and complete organ failure. The more common ones being respiratory failure, lung failure, requiring higher levels of care. Dr. Loria, with the COVID pandemic over the last 18 months, can you tell me just about how many COVID patients you've seen in the ICU? Sure, so during the peaks of COVID, uh, we had upwards of half to two thirds of our ICU uh, being COVID patients. Um, the most that we had in our COVID ICU was 20 patients. Um, and so, you know, it really, overwhelmed our critical care unit to a degree. We had to open up our uh, critical care overflow unit to be able to take care of non-COVID critically ill patients. Um, so we were very busy during that time to, to take care of our most vulnerable and sick patients in the hospital. That was a lot of time spent in the ICU. We yes. were so lucky to have you there the time, that whole time too. Mm -hmm. And Dr. Hugo, does, um, we know that COVID affects breathing. So can you tell us a little bit more about how it affects a person's lungs? Yes, of course. Um, COVID as a virus, uh, not that dissimilar to most other viruses, affects the lung either by direct infection, and that causes what we typically describe as pneumonia. Another aspect of that would be when the body itself starts to try to deal with that infection and affect and tries to fight the virus, it also starts to harm your, the, the patient's lungs. 
And that ends up being another aspect that we have to address and try to deal with. So it causes uh, shortness of breath, cough, mm -hmm. respiratory failure, um, requiring higher levels of care that we're talking about bringing them to the ICU. So are there any residual effects from COVID? Yeah, so there's a lot of residual effects from COVID. Um, the biggest being deconditioning. Basically, every day that a patient is sick in an ICU bed, they start losing muscle mass and, and function. And so there's profound weakness um, that happens as a result of, of COVID infections, particularly severe COVID infections. Um, on top of that, there's a lot of lung disease that can be unmasked or develop as a result of COVID infections, both scarring and fibrosis in the lungs, as well as something more along an asthmatic component. Mm -hmm. um, basically, the intense inflammation produced by the virus and the body's response to the virus can basically make the lungs act like that of someone with asthma. And so, you know, there's a lot of things that we're seeing um, both with patients that were critically ill with COVID, but also some that were treated as outpatients, um, you know, by, by their primary care docs. Um, so, you know, it, it, it kind of runs the gamut. Right. So if you don't have to have COVID, it's best not to have it, correct? Sure. Absolutely. Dr. Hugo, so what would you like people to know out there about COVID as a pulmonologist from a pulmonologist perspective? One of the things that I... I think it's important to, to talk about COVID, especially now, um, that's a little bit different from when this pandemic first started, is the availability of the, of the, of the vaccine. Mm -hmm. I think it's important that we get uh, everyone vaccinated. I think that will, for several reasons, uh, reduce the, the, the burden on, on the hospital, as well as reduce the cases uh, in the community. Um, and. Another benefit of the vaccine, uh, of course, is the risk of spread um, for patients that do get, or the, for the patients that do get uh, the, the infection. So simple solution, right? <laughs> get vaccinated. Get vaccinated. Absolutely. <laughs> All right. Well, Dr. Lorio, can you please tell us a little bit more about who else is part of your practice at um, Pulmonary Care, Terrebonne General? Sure. So uh, Dr. Azima joined us uh, just uh, two weeks ago, um, so we're very happy to have him with us. Uh, but we also have Dr. Ralph Bourgeois, who's been in the community for a long time, mm -hmm. uh, as well as Dr. Naveen Darajan, uh, who started with us a year ago. Uh, we also have a nurse practitioner with us, uh, Jade Carrere. Um, she's been with us, I think, now for two years. Okay. Um, so she helps support us as well. We're showing a picture right now as you're telling us who else in the practice, so that's good. We have a full house. All of you guys are ready and um, accepting patients right now, right? Everything's Absolutely. up and running now and back to yeah. normal. We're very happy. Clinic is back open. Um, we've uh, spent the past two weeks really calling all of our patients, getting everyone who missed appointments back in, um, as well as reaching out to physicians to let them know that you know we're back up and running and we're ready to take those referrals whenever they you know feel the need to, to send someone over to us. That's wonderful. And there is a physician referral that is required to see you guys, right? Absolutely, yes. Uh, right. We want to, to know that we're working in corroboration with your um, primary care physician to make okay. sure that you're getting excellent care. Okay, so they can just make a, an appointment with their physician and then they will do a referral to see you guys. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, thank y'all so much for taking time to be with us and for all you've been doing to treat our COVID patients over the last 18 some odd months. And welcome aboard again, Dr. Thank you. Hugo. Thank you. All right. Happy to be here. Thanks. Great. Terrebonne General Pulmonology Care is here to help you breathe easier with expert pulmonology treatment. As specialists in lung care, our pulmonologists provide comprehensive diagnosis and treatment to help improve not only your ability to breathe, but your quality of life. Thank you for watching To Your Health. I'm your host, Rhonda Alfred, and I'll see you right back here next time.